So here's a few news articles that I thought were worth looking at. Um, Chrome. I didn't know Chrome was popular again. Last I paid attention was years ago. All three browsers were equally popular, but that is not true. Chrome is now by far the most popular, 60%. Number two is Safari with like 20%, and then everything else is in the small change, including Microsoft's browsers and Firefox. I didn't know it had gotten like that. This is kind of surprising, especially since Chrome just hit the news uh, by um, changing their policy so they will record your browser history and target ads based on it which seems like an enormous invasion of privacy. I have no intention of putting up with that. Of course, I haven't been able to put up with Chrome for about 10 years, ever since they made the synchronization feature and they turned it on at first by default without asking you. I got disgusted and quit using it, except for a few cases where you have to use it, like Chrome Remote Desktop. I switched to using Firefox mostly. Um, I actually Opera a lot, a lot of other browsers. There are a lot of browsers out there. If you get tired of the way one is treating you, there are a bunch of others. <laughs> Yes, yes, there are some features. Yeah, Chrome has some features you don't have in Firefox. Yes, and there, if you need Chrome extensions, yeah, I mean, there are certain cases where you have to use Chrome. But, um, What's that? Chrome is using like V8, I think, V8 engine. They're all using the same thing, WebKit now. Yeah, but it's all WebKit, I think. I, th I, I think it's all WebKit. WebKit is all Let's see. Uh, WebKit, it was formerly used by Chrome. Oh, not anymore, apparently. Okay, good. I thought they were all WebKit. It's only used by Apple. Other people try to get Apple to quit that. So for all the other standards. You mean Chrome and iPhone using WebKit? Oh, I thought Chrome was now using. Okay, fair enough. I, th I thought I heard that they were all using WebKit, but I don't really know. It's a good question. On iPhone, but not on a desktop. I see. Okay, fair enough. All right. Anyway, I I wonder what to make of this. If this is true, it's enormous. Visa supposedly will now let you send money over the Solana blockchain. This is hard to believe. Um, if it's true, it's a giant leap forward for cryptocurrency. That really seems unlikely, especially the Solana blockchain. Unless I am misremembering it, I think the Solana blockchain is faster and cheaper than Ethereum, but it also crashed like eight times in the last year to where the blockchain stopped. And I don't even know how you could do anything so such a bad job. The whole point is to be distributed. But anyway. What, um, what, what did you think of the, the Doppler I, uh, Bitcoin uh, witness? The Doppler? Doppler uh, Bitcoin witness paper report? What did you, what I, heard, did you I heard the word Docker, but I couldn't understand the rest of it. Docker Bitcoin uh, um, witness. Docker Bitcoin weakness? Right. Oh, the DARPA. DARPA Bitcoin weakness. Oh, it didn't seem interesting at all. All they found was you could do a 51% attack. And um, that some of the nodes are controlled by entities. That's been a well-known problem for a very long time. Um, so I read through it, and it wasn't, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything new, and it wasn't a big risk, which they even admitted. Um, it, this has been the problem at the beginning. The fundamental design of Bitcoin was intended so that there'd be many miners all over the place, and they designed it badly, so the only thing it needs is high CPU power, and therefore, whoever can get the cheapest electricity in a giant fleet of GPUs wins, and that caused it to be concentrated. For a long time, it was concentrated in China, where China alone could have done a 51% attack. Then China banned it and kicked them out, and they mostly moved to Texas, where they can get free power by basically corruption. And, um, but it's, that's the problem. It's, the protocol didn't work in reality to distribute it. Um, anyway, uh, so if, if you can really send Visa money over Solana, that's a big push for cryptocurrency. We'll see what comes of this. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a lie. But how would this work? How would you imagine sending money? Well, you can send money over any of these things. You, you buy a stable coin, which lives on the blockchain, and then you transfer it to another account. So I mean, you can send money through any so of these crypto... Like yeah, well, PayPal's had it for a while. You can buy Bitcoin on, and I think, and I think Ethereum on PayPal, but you can't sell it, which is pretty weird. Um, and Coinbase does it. I mean, in principle, any company could choose to allow you to use cryptocurrency, like uh, Subway would let you buy sandwiches with cryptocurrency for a while. Um, Tesla with Dogecoin. Yeah, suppose, no, with Dogecoin. 
uh, you could buy, supposedly, I have some Dogecoin on my phone because I was going to buy uh, Chipotle with it, but they wouldn't take it, but they said they would take it. Chipotle supposedly will take Dogecoin. But anyway, um, the, so we'll see what comes of it, but if, if, if it actually, if Visa is the huge, the way most money really moves, and if they're going to get into a blockchain, that would be a huge push forward. So this may turn out to be a big deal, and it may just turn out to be a lie. Anyway, um, let me stop the news.